Holiday season is upon us and you may want to build a gaming PC, especially you, the first time PC builder. There are many kinds of motherboards out there and you may not wish to pick. If you are one of these people, don't worry, we are here to help you. Welcome back to Remington, a channel where we provide you with amazing PC build ideas without breaking your bank. Make sure to smash the subscribe button as well as the bell if you have not done so. Like the short guide, there are 4 points which you can refer to when buying your first motherboard. If you have not watched that, you can do so in the link above. Anyway, the 4 points are Number 1, CPU used Number 2, the chipset Number 3, the size of motherboards And number 4, the price and features Let's go to point 1, CPU used AMD or Intel? That's the first thing you should ask yourself when buying a motherboard Because you need to know that both brands use different sockets on a motherboard For today's guide, we're gonna talk AMD which brings us to point number 2, chipset A520, B450, B550 and X570 For you X570 users or those who are going to buy X570 I am sure you probably know what you guys are getting into So today we are just going to talk about A520, B450 and B550 But if you still want a guide on X570 buying You can let us know in the comments and we may do one Next, let's go on to size MATX, Mini ITX and ATX you may be wondering, what are all these? Basically, it's very simple, they are just the sizes of motherboards. So you can see here, we have 3 MATX board and 1 ATX board. The first MATX board is the A520 Vector Wi-Fi. Next one, B550M Pro VDH. Also the Wi-Fi version. Yep. The next one, you guys are very familiar, B550M without Wi-Fi. We have definitely done a full review of this board, make sure to check it out in, in the link above if you have not done so. So these are the three ATX boards and this is the only ATX board we have here the B550 Gaming Common Wi-Fi So likewise, we have also done a very in-depth review of this board If you have not done so, make sure to check out the link above So very simple, you can see the three MATX boards are smaller than the ATX board Generally, a bigger board means more features, of course, right? Yeah, more slots, more that, more, more of everything Yeah, so Gordon will definitely cover that in point number four, the hardest one, price and features. Let's go on to the main meat of motherboard buying. Let's go. Right, thanks Mel. Now, just imagine for a moment that you have gone to the shop and against all odds and fighting your fellow customers and shoppers, you have managed to secure yourself a Ryzen 5000 CPU like this 5900X right over here. Now, a CPU is a CPU. It needs a motherboard to sit on. And the range of motherboards, as Mel has described, can be a wide range. It can be very confusing. They have a very wide price range, feature range, and all that. So right, I will go from the top to the bottom. This one is the entry level. This is uh, $139. So SGD139. The one right over here is SGD225, 299, 369. So the gap between this fella and this fella is more than $200. So you may be wondering, what's the difference between all this? Should I get the $139 or should I go all the way and spend more than $300? So I'll get right into that. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with the 139 board. This fella, the MSI A520M Vector Wi-Fi. So I'm going to get it out from the box and I'll showcase to you for $139. What do you have? Now, point of note, normally when you get a board out of the box, what you'll normally come with would be an anti-static bag that looks like this. But for easier demonstration, we have decided to have the bots out of their bags. So first and foremost, it's an A520 motherboard. It's meant to be an entry range motherboard. And it kind of shows here. First and foremost, you get only two RAM slots, one pair. So what you do is, let's say you get a pair of eight or you get a pair of 16 gig sticks. So you get respectively 16 gig and 32 gigs total. You get a PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot, one single slot. You get a PCI 3.0x16 slot for your GPU, which is perfectly fine. To a low to mid-range GPU, like let's say 1660 Ti, RTX 2060, 2060, or 2070 Super, that kind. Then you have the other slots, PCI 1 slots here and here. Now, for rear I.O., what you see over here is you get the ALC892 audio codec from Realtek. This thing over here is the Intel 3168 uh, Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth. It's a very basic Wi-Fi module, nothing that fancy, but it gets you Wi-Fi. 
as well as you get all the rest are like the USB ports right over here. You won't see any USB Type C here. It's all USB Type A. And you get a PS2 port. This is your display port out. This is your HDMI out. You let's say you put like APU like the 4750G, which we have also done a review on. So all in all, I will consider this a rather cheap and cheerful board. It gets a job done. Now, some of you may be asking, hey, in the 140, 150 SGD price range, I can get a B450, which will probably have things like more RAM slots, four RAM slots. You could go for that. But I would say this board has certain things that that B450 in that price range probably wouldn't have. For one thing, it has onboard Wi-Fi. A B450 in that price range, chances are wouldn't have any form of Wi-Fi or not. So you have to put in your GPU and then you have to burn one of your PCI-1 slots, which are precious on an MATX board, for your Wi-Fi card. Number two is a rather new feature that has been showcased in the launch of Big Navi, which is the smart access memory. As AMD has announced, only the 5000 series boards like the A520 and B550 and X570 has this feature. B450 will not have this feature. And as you've seen in those reviews, smart access memory under certain conditions can boost up the performance of the GPU by quite a fair bit. So if you want two good reasons why you should go for a A520 over a B450, this is probably the reason why. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go to the next board, which is this fella over here. This is the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. Now, this guy, as I mentioned just now, is 225. So it's almost $90 more. So you may be wondering, for that $90 difference, what do I get in this fella over this fella? Here is the board itself. Now, you'll see on close thing, the first thing that strikes you is that instead of two RAM slots, you get four. Instead of the theoretical maximum of uh, 64 gigs of RAM, which is 32 times two on this fella, you can put 128 gigs of RAM on this fella, which is 32 times four. Number two, well, you get more M.2 slots. And not only that, the M.2 slots are different in terms of specs. Single M.2 slot on this fella is PCIe 3.0. The one here is PCIe 4.0. While the second one here is PCIe 3. The GPU slot, the first PCIe times 16 slot here is also PCIe 4. This is something that will come in very useful for let's say either Navi, Big Navi, or the new Nvidia Ampere GPUs because they are all PCIe 4 support. We also get a couple of other things for that extra money. For one, you get a USB Type-C front output, which is good because even though there's not really a lot of micro ATX cases with USB Type-C front, you can put this guy in a full ATX case which does have USB Type-C front. For the rear I.O., there isn't really a lot of differences. For one thing, you just get two more USB ports and you get more outputs. You get a VJ out in addition to the HDMI and the display port that that fella has. So instead of two outputs here, you get three. This is probably only relevant if you're going to put, again, like an APU onto here. Okay, for these two, the Wi-Fi and the audio codec is exactly the same. The Wi-Fi is the Intel 3168. You get the ALC892 from Realtek here. Again, cheap and cheerful sound. So that's what you get for this board. Okay, next up, from 225, we are now moving to the motherboard which costs 299. So again, you've got about slightly more than $70 price difference. A couple of features still remain identical between the two of them. You get four RAM slots. This is not going to change. This is not Threadripper. You get USB Type-C fun coming out. You get two M.2 SSD slots, PCIe 4, PCIe 3. What you do get for extra money is this. You get an additional PCIe 3.0 times 16 slot, even though this is PCIe 3.0 times 4 bandwidth, but it's good to have a full length slot for let's say like a video capture card, that kind of thing. So it's good to have additional full length slots. If you look to the rear IO is where you'll see some of the bigger differences here. For the rear IO, what we actually have over here is you can see the audio down here is looks a lot more comprehensive. Instead of just having a single out, you have uh, additional outputs here for, let's say this is for the front speakers. You have one for the center speaker, you have one for the rear speaker, and you have an optical out. Let's say you've got an audio system that uses Toslink optical out. The Wi-Fi here, instead of the 3168 that this guy comes with, what you get here is the Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6, you guess. Compared to that guy, you get much better Wi-Fi, you get much better Bluetooth. Bluetooth 4.2, Bluetooth uh, 5.1. Much better Bluetooth, much better Wi-Fi. 
And moving right along to some of the other IOs that you see right over here, you'll notice that, yeah, you get the same amount of USB ports, but you get a USB Type-C coming out from here. So you have two Type-Cs if you put this in a case with Type-C front. So one Type-C to the front, one Type-C coming out from the back. The LAN port over here, instead of gigabit Ethernet like these two fellas here, you get the Realtek 2.5G Ethernet now. Even though a lot of the switches and routers all these are still gigabit standard, it's always good to be future-proof. And that's where this 2.5G comes in. So this is what you get for 299. And yes, you'll get the IO shield here. So these two fellas, as you notice, the IO shield is a separate piece. This one is fastened onto it. So at least you don't get the, I forgot to install the IO shield syndrome. If you have to buy an AMATX board for AMD Ryzen, this is one of my go-to picks. It's a very fully feature fact port for the price. And finally, we come to the most expensive of the lot, but I will consider this guy the most fully fledged in terms of features. The first Blink board. Yes, this guy is Blink. Because actually, if you were to see these three guys power up, they hardly have any RGB lighting on this. But if you see the review that we did on this fella, you'll notice that this guy is Blink. Bar none, it's colorful AF. What you do get is, first and foremost, it's a full ATX board. So obviously, Rather than the very limited amount of slots that these guys have, you get a lot more slots. You get 3 PCIe times 1 slots, 1 PCIe times 16 slot, which has a bandwidth for PCIe 3.0 times 4, PCIe 4.0 times 16. And as you notice, this one, only one of them has a shield. This one, both of them have heat shields. Next, we move on to the rest of the features of this board. If you come to the rear I.O., nothing really much different from this fella, except that, yeah, it's got two more USB ports, except they are USB 2, but it's good to always have USB ports. Audio codec is also the ALC1200, so of course you get additional outputs, you get the optical out, you get Wi-Fi 6, you get Bluetooth 5.1, yeah, USB Type-C, two outputs, HDMI and DisplayPort, although chances are if you're going for this, you're probably not going to put an APU here. The one additional feature that this guy has, or that these three fellas don't have, is very, not very well known, but it's good to point out. It has a connector here that is able to pair up with Corsair RGB accessories, such as say the LL120 fans. What would you want to have this for? So let's say for example, you have decided on a Corsair Team Rig, but you know what? You don't really want to have multiple RGB software like Mystic Light for what's on here and IQ for the Corsair devices. So what you can do is instead of having the Corsair Commander Pro Box, you could connect the RGB devices to here, and your Corsair RGB devices will be controlled directly by Mystic Light. So even though in terms of like the patterns and all that, it won't be as comprehensive as the Commander, like I said, it's good for, let's say, you want to be able to sync everything under one software. This is one feature that in MSI's B550 range, only this fella has it. So you may be wondering, what should this guy be paired up with? So, like I mentioned, this is a very colorful board. So it should be paired with an equally colorful GPU like... This badass mother trucker right over here. Yeah, man. So... We have something in stock for it. Yes, we have something in stock for this which we are probably not going to enjoy because we're obliged to. <laughs> but never mind, we will have a video on this uh, soon enough. In short, I've taken through four motherboards from the MSI AMD Ryzen range. I do hope that I've clarified things for you, like at which price point do I go for, how much should I spend on my motherboard, how much should I budget for it, that kind of thing. If you have any further questions, you can always drop them in the comment section below and IML will be more than willing to answer them. So right over to you, Mel. Okay, and with that, you can buy your first motherboard. Yeah. So if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and return to our channel because the RTX 3080 Supreme X video is coming real soon. Yeah, we're looking forward to doing the blink bot. <clears throat> yes, because we don't have a choice. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so from Gordon and I, good night and goodbye.